So are you looking for a new mechanical keyboard or you are just in the scene and want to try a new mechanical keyboard? This video might just be for you. So hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam and I review tech stuff. Today we are taking a look at the MaxFit 87 which is a newly launched keyboard by MaxFit. It came out with the new version of the MaxFit 108 and this is the MaxFit 87 I will be taking a look at in today's video. So the MaxFit 87 is basically a TKL version of the MaxFit 108 and today we'll be taking a look at it, unboxing and reviewing it. So I want to say a huge thanks to MaxFit for sending it over and this keyboard is really competitively priced at 150 ringgit. So if you're interested, all the links will be down in the description below and I hope you enjoyed today's video. So this is the box. Now let's go through a few things as we can see on the box. Fantech MaxFit 87 mechanical keyboard. The variant I got here is the one with the blue switch. So these are actually blue switches from Fantech themselves. MaxFit 87 and on the bottom we can go through a few of its key specs right here. So we can see from the box it has dual short keycaps so it has shine through keycaps. It supports macros, it has all key anti-ghosting so this is perfectly fine so when you game there won't be any problems. And then of course this one has a detachable type-c cable and the most important feature the RGB side lighting which I think is really really nice and you guys will get to see it once I unbox it. So yeah that's it, let's unbox it. So first thing we can see right here is the detachable cable. So this is the type A to type C detachable cable that is included. Pretty decent quality and it will work fine with the keyboard. So next thing we have of course is the keyboard right here. So this is it. And we can check out the other stuff first, put the keyboard aside. We get right here a really really simple keycap puller, really nice. We get of course the MaxFit 87 mechanical keyboard user manual right here. So all the details will be inside here. So the last two things you get is right here. This is a warranty card which you can scan the QR code to go to their website and register your warranty. And then you get a really, really cool Fantech sticker right here. So that is all in the box. Now we can take a closer look at the keyboard. So it comes in this PE form right here. So this is what the keyboard looks like on the front. We have the escape key here and then we have a few indicators for caps lock and wins lock over here. Going aside, we can see that it is really, really nice. So you get the Fantech logo on the right here above the arrow keys. It has a really, really slim profile look right here, we can see. So it's more of a floating keys design, which I really, really like. On the top, we have the Type-C connector right here on the top. And the sides, this is what the sides look like. You have the strip for the RGB right here, which I will turn on later on. And on the back, you can see MaxFit 87 again. And then we get the two feet here, which are adjustable. So they have two heights. We have, this is the lower height configuration. And of course you can go one more for the higher height if you prefer this. Now let's take a look at the switch and stabilizers. So I'm just gonna grab my keycap puller and put it off. So these are the switches provided by Fantech. Surprisingly, after taking a close look, these switches are actually developed by Fantech themselves and made by themselves. So there is a Fantech logo on the switch right there, which is pretty interesting. And for a clicking switch, I think that it gets the job done with the clickiness. I could take it out to show you guys, but sadly this keyboard isn't hot swappable. So yeah, if you get this keyboard, do choose the switch you want because you cannot swap it out for anything you want in the future unless you know how to desolder it. Here is a closer look at the stabilizers. So they actually come pre loop a little bit and they sound pretty good, I think. You guys will get to hear it in the sound test and tell me your opinions on how the stabilizers sound like. So as the switches are not hot swappable, you actually cannot take out the stabilizers to mod them. So now let's plug in and see how the RGB looks like and especially the side RGB. So nice, the keyboard just turned on. It looks amazing right now. So as we can see, it's plugged in and this is how the RGB looks like. Most importantly, I want to show you guys the side RGB. Ooh, that is really, really nice. So this is a really nice feature I like about this. The side RGB is configurable and it looks amazing. So it's on both sides. So after using this keyboard for a few days, these are a few things I like about it. So good thing is the build quality. It's a pretty solid build, even though it's almost a full plastic build. The full build feels very, very solid and it's really, really not wobbly at all. And when you're typing it or when you're using for games, it really feels sturdy and it won't be a problem. Second thing I really like is the software. You can configure the lighting or the macros on it as it states. And it's quite configurable for a keyboard like this. And I think for the price, it's definitely quite nice feature you could have. 
Last but not least, I really really love the side RGB lighting. It really brings some new life and it's a really really nice concept. And it really stands out in this kind of keyboard, especially at this price. And it stands out from all the competition, which I really like as well. So now for a few things I don't really like about this keyboard. It's priced at around 150 ringgit, which is really good. But a lot of keyboards now offer hot swappable PCBs if you want to switch out the switches for the ones you like. So for example, the one I got here is the um, switcher, the blue switches and these are not changeable unless you know how to desolder and that is a whole other process I don't want to get into. But the pre-loop stabilizers are quite decent I would say for this price and they do sound rightly but if you want to mod them you sadly cannot remove them because the switches are soldered in. So the furthest thing you can go to mod this keyboard is just to change out the keycaps and I think that is basically it. You can try modding the case but the case being so low profile I don't think it can fit any form inside. Now time for a typing sound test. So I would say if you're currently getting into mechanical keyboards or you just want to upgrade your old membrane keyboard to a new one, this is definitely a good recommendation. So it starts off at 150 ringgit, which is really cheap for the price and with all the features you get, I think that this board is definitely a good buy. You may not want the hot swappable feature and all of the customizability that goes into a better one, but if you're just looking for a basic keyboard for everyday use and gaming, this is definitely a good buy. So a huge thanks to Fantech for sending this over, all the links will be down in the description if you're interested in purchasing them so yeah that was it for this video guys hope you like this video if you like this video like for like if you didn't like this video dislike this video if you're not subscribed yet get subscribed i have more content that is coming very soon as always thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next video and goodbye guys